Welcome back to MKE Gadgets. We're over at Delay today, and that's where our project is all about. And I got a piece of stock in here, and I hit it with a magic marker, and I made it all red. And a lot of times, the first thing you want to do, it's called machine for cleanup. You want to remove any markers on there, or if it's been saw cut, and you want to make that nice and flat as possible, because your next operation might be center drilling and then drilling. And if there's a little raised part here, which I have right now, that could break the center drill or push it off center. So I'm going to take a pass here. So I repositioned the camera and you can see I didn't clean up here. There's a little raised part. And that tells me that the tool is too low. You should have your tool light centered on the axis of the spindle, which should be the axis of the chuck and the axis of your part. Now, if I take a deeper pass here, this would be a real problem. So today we're gonna to make a tool height setting gauge. So here you can see where the tool is below center. Now you don't want it above center either. In this view, hopefully you can see where you're going below the center. That's not desirable. Let me put a different tool in that's set right on center and we'll face this off again. This tool is set to right height. So watch that little red magic marker line disappear. So you saw we cleaned up completely there and we remove the red marker line. This tool is set at the right height. So sitting here behind my lathe, I have all my turning tools all set up, but you want a quick and easy way to make sure that tool is on the center. So let's go over to the table saw and start making this gauge. So a while ago, somebody gave me all this broken Lexon and I said, well, I'll take it. I'll make something out of it. And it's kind of dirty. And I, and I washed this one up. And for what I'm going to do today, this would be perfect. I just got to cut it to width and the length. Well, that was the width. Now we cut the length. I cut the height a little bit long, and we can always sneak up on that. I'd rather cut it long than too short. Let's go back to the lathe, and we'll kind of talk about how this is all going to work. So back at the lathe, I have a scrap piece of polycarbonate, sometimes called Lexon. The idea is I'm going to scratch that tip in here. Now this is my tool that set a perfect center line. And you see that scratch line? Well, that's going to tell me the height. But having this piece of plastic here is going to be wobbling, and I got to solve that problem. So I went to my scrap pile of aluminum, and I found this piece here. So if I bolt these together, and whenever I come over here, I'll always be at the same height. Now, here's my grid piece. I'm not going to scribe it till I bolt this piece on. Bolt that on there. And, this will, and I'll be able to move in there real nice and close. So no matter what tool I'm using, or if I change inserts, I can do a quick check. So these two got to be drilled and tapped and bolted together. So let's go over to Bridgeport Mill and do some drilling and tapping. So what I want to do is bolt these two together. So we're going to drill quarter 20 hole half inch from the end and three inches from the end. I wrote the dimensions down here, so when I cut into this, I can remember. Let's make some chips. Off camera, I'll tap these two holes quarter 20, and we'll set up to cut the plastic sheet. Now we got to drill these two through holes, and I wrote a note here so I wouldn't forget. First hole is half inch from the end, and the second hole is three inches from the end. 
Write a note. The future me will be happy you're dead. So for hardware, I picked out button head, cap screws, quarter 20 stainless. That way they won't rust. Well, with the screws installed, let's go over to the lathe and scribe a line. Took a magic marker and put a little red on there. And now I want to scribe a very shallow line on there. Holding the base flat on the ways. Can you see that little scratch there? Now we'll go over to Bridgeport and I'll show you a unique technique to make that a little bit bigger. I want to pick up that scratch line I made there and with a number one center drill I'm going to use this as an engraving tool. I'm going to touch off the face of the part and then back it up two thousandths and make a scratch. If nothing happens I'll drop it down one thousandths and make a scratch until they get a nice scratch all the way across. I don't want to make the scratch line too wide or too deep. So I have a flashlight here on the end shining light and it really helps find that little scratch line I got in there. I move the table back and forth until I did the best I could to line up the center drill and that scribe line. So I came down and I touched my Z and I zeroed it out. Now clamping this flex on, it could bow on me and pop up or pop down a little bit. So I'll move two thousandths above my Z zero. And I'm not even turning the spindle on. I'm just going back and forth. And the, Doing this method, I get the thinnest, shallowest line possible I can make. All right. All right. Because I can rotate this, bring it out, and when I have different, I'll have different tools in here and I'll be at different positions. So I have plenty of room here with my Lexon and with my aluminum base, that no matter where I'm at, I'll be able to pick up zero. So I must confess, I got this idea from a metalworking magazine, and another thing they added was a mirror. So now you can see in the reflection, you can really make sure that you're on that center line. And the problem is, well, how do you hold this mirror at the same angle printed these sides that are going to clamp on the edge here? So you can see they got a slot and they got a hole. So I'm going to have to, off camera, I'm going to drill and tap some holes here to hold these. So I drilled and tapped these holes off camera, 832, and I put them on the center line of my scratch. That was a mistake. I should have put them higher or lower, so I lost some of my scratch distance. But I think it turned out pretty good. The mirror is plastic. I didn't want a glass mirror because I didn't want it to break and have glass around the shop. And you can get this at your camping store, your outdoor store. I bought mine at my ultra super mega big a box store. So let's see how this really works now. I don't know if the lights are giving us a little reflection here. So you can tilt it right like that. The lights are giving us a little reflection. So it pivots on those screws. I also drilled a hole for hanging. I shouldn't have done that because now that's interfering with the reflection. So it might be kind of hard to, to see here, but you can see your online and the reflection, and you can see your online right off the groove. So don't drill a hole for hanging it like I did. This unique tool turned out pretty good. I made a couple mistakes. One, I shouldn't have drilled a hole that close to the line, and I shouldn't have drilled and tapped these holes on the center line. 
But I'm gonna use it for a while and I can always make a new one. Piece of Lexan I got for nothing. 3D printed the mirror holders. The aluminum was my scrap box. The only thing I really bought was these four screws. Two to hold the mirror, and down here two to hold the Lexan to the aluminum base. All in all, I'm very happy with it. So this is MKE Gadgets. Thank you for taking the time to view my video today on this very unique lathe tool height setting gauge. That's harder to say than Ultra Mega Mega Box Store. Please support my channel by subscribing. I would really appreciate it. Thanks, we'll see you tomorrow.